As the first light of dawn breaks through the darkness, casting a golden hue over the world, each sunrise whispers a divine invitation. It is a call to step into a fresh chapter of life, a gift of grace wrapped in hope and opportunity. Every morning is a sacred reset, a moment to let go of yesterday's burdens and embrace the boundless possibilities God has prepared for us. This is the hour when our spirits are most attuned to renewal, a chance to realign our hearts with His eternal purpose. Before the busyness of the day claims your attention, take a sacred pause. Before your feet even touch the ground, let your first words acknowledge the One who has given you the gift of life. Whisper a declaration that echoes the truth of His faithfulness, something good is going to happen to me today, and something good is going to happen through me today. These words are not mere wishful thinking, they are a proclamation of faith, a conscious decision to trust in the God who holds every moment of your day in His hands. This act of faith does more than uplift your spirit, it reshapes your reality. It shifts your focus from fear to hope, from doubt to expectation. It dares negativity to challenge the sovereign promises of God, for as His word assures us, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope, Jeremiah 29, 11. In this quiet, holy moment, as the sun rises, let your soul rise too, anchored in the certainty of His love and the limitless possibilities of His grace. Today is not just another day, it is a day filled with divine potential, a canvas waiting for His blessings to unfold through you. Gratitude transforms the heart, rewires the mind, and realigns our perspective with heaven's truths. It is the posture of a soul that recognizes the hand of God in all things, both seen and unseen. When we choose to begin the day with thanksgiving, we open the door to joy, a joy that is not dependent on circumstances but rooted in the assurance of God's enduring love. Psalm chapter 143, 8 calls us to trust in this unfailing love, let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. It is a powerful reminder that each morning is a divine message, a love letter written in the light of the rising sun, speaking of God's mercy renewed and His promises steadfast. Gratitude, therefore, becomes our response, a declaration that we see and value His hand at work in our lives. Take a moment to reflect on the gifts that often go unnoticed. The rhythm of your breath, the warmth of a loved one's smile, the steady provision of food and shelter. These are not mere coincidences but evidences of God's faithfulness. Each blessing, no matter how small, carries a whisper of His care. When we count these blessings, our burdens grow lighter, and our hearts become more attuned to His voice. By pausing to thank God for the day's first light, we allow His peace to take root, setting the tone for all that follows. Gratitude is not just an act but a way of living, a lens through which we view the world. And through that lens, we begin to see His fingerprints on everything, transforming mundane mornings into sacred encounters with the Creator who gives all good things. Hope is the lifeline that carries us through the stormy seas of life. It is not fragile or fleeting, it is a deeply rooted conviction that springs from God's promises, unshaken by the winds of doubt. As the writer of Hebrews declares, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure, Hebrews chapter 6, 19. It is a hope not based on wishful thinking but on the unchanging character of our Creator, who works all things for the good of those who love Him. C.S. Lewis's words resonate with profound truth, hardships often prepare ordinary people for an extraordinary destiny. Our struggles are not meaningless, they are the chisels God uses to shape us for the greater purposes He has planned. In Jeremiah 29, 11, we are reminded of this divine assurance, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. These words are a lifeline, pulling us out of despair and into the certainty that God's plans are far greater than our current circumstances. When challenges arise, when the weight of life feels unbearable, hope whispers that the story is not over. It reminds us that our trials are temporary, but God's promises are eternal. This hope empowers us to face each day with courage, knowing that even in the darkest valleys, He is with us. It is the bridge between what is seen and what is unseen, between the natural and the supernatural. Hope, rooted in the eternal, achieves the impossible.
It lifts our eyes above the storm, allowing us to see the rainbow of his promises. It is the quiet confidence that the God who parted the Red Sea, who calmed the raging storm, and who conquered death itself, is the same God working in our lives today. Hold fast to this hope, for it will never fail. It is the anchor of our souls and the light that guides us toward the extraordinary destiny he has prepared. Life is a sacred gift, brimming with opportunities to reflect God's glory. Each day is a canvas, and how we choose to fill it determines the legacy we leave behind. To live passively is to forfeit the abundance of life that Christ promises, John chapter 10, 10. Instead, we are called to live intentionally, aligning our every thought, word, and action with His divine purpose. Beginning the day with a prayer of surrender is not just an act of faith but a declaration of trust. When we say, Unto you, O Lord, do I bring my life, Psalm chapter 25, 1, we acknowledge that our lives are not our own, they belong to the one who created us. This surrender is not a loss but a gain, for in giving ourselves to God, we open the door to his guidance, wisdom, and strength. Proverbs chapter 3, 6 reassures us of this, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Trusting God with every aspect of our lives invites His hand to orchestrate a symphony of purpose and blessing. Intentional living begins with asking the right questions, Lord, what is your will for me today? How can I honor you in my relationships, my work, and my decisions? Whether it's pursuing a new opportunity, navigating a challenging relationship, or stepping into an unknown future, seeking His will ensures that our steps are aligned with His eternal plan. This alignment brings peace, even when the path ahead is unclear, for we know that the one leading us sees the end from the beginning. Living intentionally for God's glory also means embracing each moment with purpose. It's in the small, often overlooked decisions, how we treat others. How we respond to challenges, how we use our time, that His light shines brightest. Let your life be a testimony to His goodness, a reflection of His grace, and a beacon of hope to a world in need. For when we live intentionally, seeking His will above all, our lives become a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Romans chapter 12, 1. The words we speak are seeds sown into the soil of our lives, carrying the power to shape our reality. Proverbs chapter 18, 21 reminds us, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruits. What we declare over ourselves and others can either build us up or tear us down. Therefore, it is crucial to speak words that reflect God's promises, even when our circumstances suggest otherwise. When you declare boldly, I am strong, you are not denying your weakness, you are proclaiming God's strength in the midst of it. Paul's words in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 9 resound with this truth, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Your declaration is an act of faith, a conscious decision to trust in God's ability to sustain and empower you. Even when you feel overwhelmed, these words remind you of the truth, you are not alone, and His strength is made available to you. Saying, I am blessed, even when circumstances seem dire, shifts your perspective from lack to abundance. It aligns your heart with the truth of Ephesians chapter 1, 3, which tells us that we are already blessed, with every spiritual blessing in Christ. This declaration does not ignore the trials you face but asserts that God's provision and goodness are greater than any challenge. It is a reminder that your identity is not defined by your struggles but by His promises. Declarations of faith are not magic formulas, they are expressions of trust in God's sovereignty. When we speak life-giving words, we open ourselves to His favor, shifting our focus from what we see to what He has spoken. Just as he spoke creation into existence, our words, spoken in alignment with his truth, have the power to create, heal, and restore. Declare today, with confidence and conviction, that his strength, blessings, and favor are yours, for his word will not return void. Isaiah chapter 55, 11. Let your voice echo the promises of heaven, shaping your life and the lives of those around you in extraordinary ways. Storms, though daunting, are not meant to destroy us but to refine us, to deepen our faith, and to draw us closer to God. They remind us that our strength alone is insufficient, compelling us to lean fully on His infinite power and grace. 
These seasons of hardship are not punishments but opportunities, divine setups for breakthroughs that will reveal God's glory in our lives. Isaiah chapter 40, 31 assures us of the reward for placing our hope in the Lord. To soar on wings like eagles is to rise above the turbulence of life, carried by the strength of the Almighty. Eagles do not escape the storm, they use its winds to lift them higher. Likewise, when we trust in God, the very challenges meant to defeat us become the force that elevates us to new heights of spiritual maturity and blessing. When life feels overwhelming, it's easy to believe that God is distant or silent. Yet, as the psalmist beautifully declares, the moment you pray, the tide of the battle begins to turn. This is a powerful reminder that prayer is not passive, it is an active weapon of faith. Even when we don't see immediate results, God is working behind the scenes, orchestrating every detail for our good and His glory, Romans chapter 8, 28. The walls of Jericho didn't fall on the first day of marching, but the victory was set in motion the moment the Israelites obeyed. Storms also teach us to rely on God's timing and wisdom. We may not understand why the storm came or how long it will last, but we can trust that God is using it to prepare us for greater things. As C.S. Lewis wrote, God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pains, it is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. The storm is not the end, it is the prelude to a testimony of his faithfulness. So, when the winds howl and the waves crash, hold fast to his promises. Trust that the God who calms the seas with a word is holding you steady. Declare boldly, even in the midst of the storm, God is my refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble, Psalm chapter 46, 1. The storm is temporary, but his love and power are eternal. And when the clouds part and the sun shines again, you will look back and see how the storm shaped you into a stronger, more faithful version of yourself, ready to soar into the destiny he has prepared. The power of our words is a divine gift one that God himself demonstrated when he spoke the universe into existence. In Genesis, we see the Creator shaping reality through his spoken word, let there be light, and there was light. Made in his image, our words carry that same creative potential, enabling us to align our lives with his truth or veer into the destructive paths of doubt and fear. Proverbs chapter 18, 21 aptly reminds us, death and life are in the power of the tongue. What we speak over ourselves and others has lasting impact, either cultivating growth or sowing despair. When you declare, I am strong, you are not pretending that life is without hardship. Instead, you are affirming the presence of God's strength within you. It is a proclamation that invites his power into your weakness, as Paul revealed in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 9, for when I am weak, then I am strong. These declarations become lifelines, reminding us that we are upheld not by our own abilities but by the sufficiency of His grace. In moments of doubt, they call us back to the truth that His strength is perfected in our frailty. Similarly, declaring, I am blessed, is a profound act of faith. It's an acknowledgement of God's provision and faithfulness, regardless of current circumstances. Even in seasons of lack, this declaration shifts our focus to the abundant spiritual blessings described in Ephesians chapter 1, 3. Speaking blessings over our lives aligns our hearts with the reality of God's promises and redirects our perspective from scarcity to His overflowing grace. Our words also serve as a testimony to those around us. When we speak life, hope, and faith, we not only shape our own reality but also inspire others to believe in God's goodness. Just as Jesus declared, it is finished, bringing victory to all who believe, our declarations rooted in his word carry the power to create, heal, and restore. Isaiah chapter 55, 11 promises that his word will not return void, and when we echo those truths, we release his favor into our lives and the world around us. So, let your voice reflect the promises of heaven. Speak boldly, proclaiming victory over challenges, strength in weakness, and joy in adversity. Let your words sow seeds of faith that will yield a harvest of blessings, not just for yourself but for all who hear them. In every situation, remember that your voice has been entrusted with divine power, use it to shape a reality that honors God and reflects His unchanging love. Let go of the chains of the past, for they are not yours to carry. God's grace is greater than any mistake you have made. 
His word in Isaiah chapter 43, 18 to 19 calls us to a liberating truth. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. These verses remind us that the past, no matter how painful or broken, cannot hold us back from the new life God is creating within us. In Christ, you are not defined by your failures but by his victory. The Apostle Paul proclaimed this transformative truth in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17, if anyone is in Christ. The new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. Every mistake, every regret, every moment of weakness is redeemed in him. They are no longer scars of defeat but testimonies of his grace and power. Consider Moses, a man burdened by the weight of his past. A fugitive and a murderer, he could have allowed his failures to paralyze him. But God saw in Moses a leader, a deliverer, someone who would confront Pharaoh and part the Red Sea. Moses' past did not disqualify him, it prepared him. In the same way, God can use your experiences, even the painful ones, to shape your calling and destiny. Embracing the new creation means seeing yourself as God sees you. It requires silencing the inner critic that replays past failures and replacing it with his truth. You are my beloved child, 1 John chapter 3, 1. God is not interested in your perfection, he is interested in your willingness to trust him, to rise after every fall, and to step into the future he has prepared. Every day is a new opportunity to walk in his grace. Lay down the burdens of regret and pick up the promises of redemption. Trust that he is not only erasing your past but also writing a story of hope, renewal, and purpose. Just as he called Moses to lead despite his shortcomings, he is calling you to fulfill your divine destiny. Your past may have shaped you, but it does not define you, God's grace does. Step boldly into the new thing he is doing, for the best is yet to come. Each new day is a gift wrapped in God's mercy, renewed with the rising sun, Lamentations chapter 3. 22 to 23. It is a sacred invitation to step into his grace and purpose, free from the shadows of yesterday and the uncertainties of tomorrow. When we embrace this truth, life transforms from mundane to miraculous, a canvas where every moment carries the potential for joy, growth, and divine fulfillment. C.S. Lewis's wisdom reminds us that while we cannot rewrite our past, we hold the pen for today. You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. This perspective liberates us from the paralysis of regret and invites us to seize the present with intention and faith. Dwelling on what has been steals the precious energy needed to create what can be. Instead, we are called to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, Hebrews chapter 12, 2, and trust that he is weaving every thread of our story into something beautiful. Living each day as if it were your last is not about fear or urgency, it is about presence and purpose. It means cherishing the small moments, the laughter of a loved one, the kindness of a stranger, the beauty of creation. It means engaging fully with the people and tasks God places before you, knowing that even the simplest acts can glorify Him when done with love and gratitude. Most importantly, it means aligning your life with God's will, pursuing the calling He has placed on your heart. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full, John chapter 10, 10. To live fully is to live for him. To seek his kingdom in every choice and every interaction. When we approach each day with a heart open to his leading, we discover the miracles hidden in the ordinary, the unexpected blessings, the quiet moments of peace, and the profound joy of knowing we are walking in step with our Creator. Don't let worry rob you of today's blessings or regret cloud your vision for tomorrow. Instead, wake up with a heart of gratitude, ready to embrace the opportunities God has prepared. Trust that, as C.S. Lewis also said, there are far, far better things ahead than any we leave behind. Start today with faith, and live it to its fullest, confident that your ending will reflect the glory of a life surrendered to Him. Peace, true peace, is not found in the absence of difficulties but in the steadfast presence of God. It is the assurance that no matter what storms rage around us, his hand remains unshaken, guiding and sustaining us. This peace is not passive, it is an armor we put on daily. As Ephesians chapter 6, 15 urges, put on the shoes of peace, equipping yourself to walk confidently through life's challenges.
These shoes are not just for standing still but for moving forward, knowing that God's peace grounds you even when the road is rocky. When troubles come, and they inevitably will, anchor your heart with the declaration, God's got this. This simple statement is a profound act of faith, a reminder that the creator of the universe is orchestrating every detail of your life for good. Romans chapter 8, 28 assures us that, in all things God works for the good of those who love him. Trusting this truth allows us to navigate challenges not with fear but with a calm confidence, knowing that his plans are far greater than what we can see. Faith is the power that propels us beyond what seems possible. Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 17, 20 inspire us to dream big and trust deeply. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move, and it will move. Even the smallest faith, when placed in the hands of an omnipotent God, has the power to move the immovable. Step out boldly, even when the way forward is unclear, and watch as God works miracles, turning obstacles into stepping stones. At the heart of peace and faith is the prioritization of our relationship with God. Matthew chapter 6, 33 calls us to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, assuring that everything else we need will be provided. This is not just a command but an invitation to draw near to the one who knows and loves us fully. Beginning and ending each day in his presence transforms not only our circumstances but our perspective. It grounds us in his love, reminding us that he is both our foundation and our refuge. Let his love be the lens through which you view the world and the foundation on which you build your life. When God is first in your heart and mind, his peace, power, and provision flow freely into every area of your life. Each step, taken in faith and guided by his presence, leads you closer to the abundant life he has promised, a life marked by his glory filled with his purpose, and overflowing with his peace.